नमस्कार आप देख रहे हैं नेक्स्ट टाइम न्यूज पॉलिटिकल बाइट और आपके साथ मैं हूं क्रांति सिंह एक बार फिर हमारे आज के इस खास रिपोर्ट में आप सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है कपिल सिब्बल ये नाम तो आपने सुना ही होगा कांग्रेस की तरफ से इस नाम ने जो धूम मचाया है वो पूरे बीजेपी खेमे को हिला करके रख देता है आज उसी कपिल सिब्बल का हम एक बयान आपको सुनाने वाले भरी संसद के बीच में मोदी सरकार के खिलाफ उन्होंने जमकर के अपना गुस्सा जो है उतारते हुए नजर आए उनकी तरफ से जो ये गुस्सा जाहिर किया गया वो सुनना आपके लिए बेहद जरूरी है कपिल सिब्बल का ये बयान गृह मंत्री जी ने सही कहा कि ये एक बड़ा ऐतिहासिक बिल है हाँ ऐतिहासिक बिल है क्योंकि आप संविधान की बुनियाद को बदलने जा रहे हैं इसलिए ये ऐतिहासिक बिल है आप हमारे इतिहास को बदलने जा रहे हैं इसीलिए ऐतिहासिक बिल है और आपने ये भी कहा कि करोड़ों लोग एक नए सवेरे को कल देखेंगे मैं आपसे ये भी इल्तजा करना चाहता हूँ कि लाखों लोग की रात खत्म नहीं होगी ये काली रात खत्म नहीं होगी आप कहते हैं कि आपके प्रधानमंत्री जी सबका साथ और सबका विश्वास विकास में विश्वास करते हैं सबका विकास सबका विश्वास तो उन्होंने खो दिया क्योंकि 2014 से लेकर अब तक सबका साथ उन्होंने कभी भी नहीं दिया यू सेड राइज अब पॉलिटिक्स आई आई रिक्वेस्ट यू होम मिनिस्टर यू राइज अब पॉलिटिक्स बिकॉज दिस इज नथिंग बट पॉलिटिक्स यू आर डिस्ट्रॉइंग द फ्यूचर ऑफ दिस कंट्री सर आई हैव the following things to say and following objections about this bill first this bill gives legal color to the two nation theory which i have already stated two religion cannot be a factor in the acquisition of citizenship that has been rejected by the constitution of india so there are three concepts that you must understand which is the basis of citizenship number one born in the territory of india number two my parents were born in the territory of india descent and number 3 that i am ordinarily resident in the territory of india there is no fourth concept on the basis of which citizenship can be granted so i might tell you something very interesting i belong to a family which used to live in lahore i came to india and i was born here in 1948 but my brothers my sister my parents my grandparents were all born in pakistan we were all refugees when we came to india we were not citizens of india why well, because we were not born in the republic of india therefore we were not citizens of india but there was a provision in the constitution which said that if you are born in an india of 1935 undivided india then you shall be a citizen of india but that was not the only thing i had to become a resident of india i had to come to india Six months prior to July 19, 1948, and if I came to India six months prior to that, I would have been a citizen of India. So, residence, ordinary resident, bona fide residence, is an essential element for being a citizen. For those who came after the 19th of July, 1948, they had to file an application before an appropriate authority. and in that application before they filed it they should have been resident in india for the last 6 months they too could not get citizenship so that's the basis and the foundation of citizenship that's why mr chidambaram asked who has advised you to do all this who has advised you who has given you that opinion from the law ministry and the attorney general none let me tell you something else now sir under article 11 there is a provision which says that through another act through a law made by parliament somebody can acquire citizenship or terminate citizenship that is the citizenship act now so the citizenship act some very interesting provisions let me just tell you just a couple of them the citizenship act says that if you are born in the territory of india from january 26 1950 to july 1 1987 you shall be a citizen of india if you are born in the territory of india from july 1 1987 to when the 2003 bill has been passed which was passed in 2004 which is the citizen amendment bill you shall be a citizen of india if one of your parents is a citizen of india and if you are born after 2004 you shall be a citizen of india if one of your parents is a citizen of india and the other is not an illegal migrant that is the condition of the citizenship act if you are if one of the spouses is an illegal migrant 
you can't be a citizen of India. Now, sir, what amendment have you brought? Just think about it. What does your amendment say? Let me just tell you what it says. I'm sure you've read it. Hmm. Provided that you are making an amendment to 2.1b. You say, provided that any person belonging to Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi, or Christian community from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, or Pakistan, who entered into India on or before 31st day of December 2014, and who has been exempted by the central government by or under sec clause C of subsection 2 of section 3 of the Passport Entry into India Act 1920, or from the application of the provisions of the Foreigners Act 1946, or any rule or order made there under, shall be treated as an illegal migrant, shall not be treated as an illegal migrant for the purposes of this act. Now please tell me, the Foreigners Act deals with people who are declared to be foreigners. The entry, the passport entry into act deals with people who have entered into India without a valid document. And now in your objects and reasons you have said that these are all people who have been persecuted. Where is the provision for persecution in the act? There is no provision for persecution. There is no provision for persecution. If a man came from Bangladesh or from Pakistan into India in 1972, and he has been an illegal migrant after 1972 till date, how will he prove, how will you say that he has been persecuted? Unless he says that he was persecuted. Amongst all the people who have come to India without any legal documentation, has anybody said that they have been persecuted? Hmm. Do we have a law here which says that you apply and say that you are persecuted and you shall be granted citizenship? It's very interesting, Mr. Nadda, in the course of his speech, mentioned Dr. Manmohan Singh and what he said, but he didn't mention what advantage he said. I wish he had. Because Dr. Manmohan Singh said, look, if people have been persecuted and they have come from our neighboring countries, you must give them citizenship. Unko nagrikta milni chahiye. Aur Advani ji ne kya kaha? Refugees. Umay aapko jawab deta hum. Unho ne kaha, there are various, various kinds of allegations made that you are making discrimination between this and that, which we do not propose to do. We always say that a person who has to flee because of religious persecution is a refugee. Bona fide refugee. And he cannot be regarded on par with the illegal immigrant who may have come here for any reason, even for economic reasons. If he is an illegal immigrant, he is an illegal immigrant. This is what Advaniji said. Now, if these people are illegal immigrants, on what basis you say that they have been persecuted? Has anybody said that they have been persecuted? There are also other illegal immigrants, I won't name the religion they belong to, who have also come, who are also illegal immigrants. So how do you discriminate between one illegal immigrant and another illegal immigrant? And how do you say, aap kaise kaise sakte ho, ki ee loog to persecute huye ta, aapko kaise maalum ki wo persecute huye ta? Mein udharan deta hoon, ek shaks yaha 1972 mein aaya, us 1972 mein aaya, uske do teen bachche hain, uski mrityu ho gai. Aaj wo hai nahi, uske bachche kehte hain, mujhe citizenship do, aap kaise do gai? जिसकी मृत्यु हो गई वो तो कह नहीं सकता कि भाई वो प्रोसिक्यूट हुआ था उसने कभी पहले कहा है भी नहीं तो बच्चों को सिटीजनशिप कहां से मिलेगी किस आधार पे दोगे आप वो मापदंड क्या है किसी भी किसी ने कोई किस कहीं गया है बोला है इन जो जो लाखों लोग हैं जिनकी आप बात करते हो 19 लाख चलिए 19 लाख की बात करते हैं उनमें कितने हिंदू हैं 5 लाख है 6 लाख है 10 लाख है 12 लाख उसके बारे में बात नहीं करूंगा मैं लेकिन किस ऐसे हिंदू ने कहा है कि मैं प्रोसिक्यूट हुआ था आपको साहब बड़ी गलत फहमी है उन्होंने मालूम क्या कहा है अपने लेगेसी पेपर्स में कि मैं तो यहां का रहने वाला हूं उन्होंने सब डेक्लेरेशन दी है कि मैं तो यहां का रहने वाला हूं आप उसको इस विधेयक के द्वारा झूठ बुला रहे हो प्लीज कंक्लूड जो शख्स वन सेकेंड सर जो शख्स कह रहा है कि मैं तो हिंदुस्तान का रहने वाला हूं आप उसको कहना चाहते हो नहीं नहीं तुम हिंदुस्तान के रहने वाले नहीं हो तुम कहो तो हम तुम तो बांग्लादेश से आए थे और क्यों परसिक्यूट हो रहे थे इसलिए तुम हम हम आपको सिटीजनशिप देंगे ये किस किस्म का कानून है आप क्या कर रहे हो संविधान के साथ आप धज्जियां उड़ा रहे हो संविधान से आपका मकसद क्या है आपका मकसद तो हमें मालूम है 2014 से हमें मालूम है आपका मकसद क्या रहा है कभी घर वापसी कभी लव जिहाद 
कभी ट्रिपल तलाक कभी सी ए बी कभी एन आर सी फिर दोबारा एन आर सी मतलब के फिर थ्री सेवेंटी आपका लक्ष्य हमें मालूम है आपका लक्ष्य मालूम है आपका नजरिया भी मालूम है आप नाम से किसी के नाम से पता करना चाहते हो इस घर इस, इस देश में वो रहेगा या नहीं रहेगा आपने एक बड़ी आपत्तिजनक बात की शुरुआत में आपने कहा कि वो जो मुसलमान यहाँ हैं उनको डर करने की जरूरत नहीं किस मुसलमान के आपसे डर है हिंदुस्तान का कोई मुसलमान आपसे डरता नहीं है ना मैं डरता हूं ना मैं डरता हूं जहां इस देश के नागरिक डरते हैं ना कोई मुसलमान डरता है डरते हैं तो हम संविधान से डरते हैं जिसकी आप दजिया उड़ा रहे दूसरी बात सर थर्ड पॉइंट सर दे आर टारगेटिंग ए कम्युनिटी विदाउट नेमिंग इट इन दिस बिल दे आर टारगेटिंग अ कम्युनिटी विदाउट नेमिंग इट it violates the basic structure of the constitution it is divisive and exclusive it will destabilize our polity and 18 to 20 million people will not trust us it weakens the foundation of our culture of our beliefs of our ethos it 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 has consequences that you can't even imagine and this is part of your political strategy the last thing i want to say sir is this that this is legally tenable and legally reprehensible morally reprehensible those who have no idea of india cannot protect the idea of india don't convert this indian republic into a jurassic republic where there are two dinosaurs pm modi ko lekar ke gusse se bhadakte hue nazar aaye kapil sibal ka ye bayan sunne ke baad aap log ke kya tark hai comment box mein aap hame zarur batayiega abhi ke liye bas itna hi desh duniya ki tamam badi khabron ke liye dekhte rahiye next nine news political bye